36 state governors to hold an emergency meeting over the threats by the Nigeria Labour Congress to embark on an industrial action to demand that the federal government rescinds its decision on the recent hike in the prices of petroleum products and electricity. The Nigerian Governors Forum announced this in a statement issued by its head, Media and Public Affairs, Abdul Razak Bello Bakindo. He said the emergency meeting scheduled for 6 p.m. on Thursday would seek ways of settling the rift and find a mutual agreement. According to him, all governors were expected to attend the first NGF meeting, uh, emergency virtual teleconference, to consider the matter, which he described as of urgent national importance. We've now been joined by Chris Onyeka, Deputy Secretary NLC in charge of Lagos Office. Thanks, Mr. Onyeka, for joining us on The Breakfast. Yeah, thank you for having me. How resolute is the labor unions on the planned strike? Uh, uh, it, it, I don't think we should, be, we should be asked how resolute we are this time. Because uh, it is not only the trade union movement that is driving this process. The resistance against the insensitive hike in the, in the price of petroleum products and electricity tariffs is actually being driven by the masses out there, by, by market women, by students, by civil society organizations. And so that tells you that it is not just labor. As I speak with you, since this week, I have been in several engagements with these various segments of the society, sex-based organizations, and everybody. And in fact, to answer your question, I will tell you that we have never been more resolute against the anti-poor uh, anti policies of government, okay, more than we are now. We are more resolute now than ever to engage the government, to achieve the government, to uh, correct itself, to ensure that it stops its anti-poor policies and anti-massive uh, policies that it has embarked upon. So we are very, very resolute. Hasn't the government reached out to the unions on the rationale behind the hike? I didn't get that. We're trying to find out, has the government not reached out to the labor unions on why, you know, the hike, the electricity and uh, uh, other hikes that have been uh, announced? You mean why this hike is different from the other one? Sorry? Didn't get that. Too. We're trying to find out, has the government reached out to the labor unions? Sorry. Ms. Onyeka, can you hear me? Okay. Ms. Onyeka, are you there? I can hear you, I can hear you. Has the government reached out to the labor unions to explain why uh, for the electricity and fuel hike? Uh, the government has, uh, has, has reached out, just the same way we reached out to, to them when they came up with these uh, review policies. We reached out to them, we wrote to them, we made calls. They have, we have also had meetings with them, but uh, all this reaching out, I have not solved any problem. They have not met us uh, halfway. They have not uh, uh, heeded any of our demands. And, and because they have not heeded any of our demands, uh, we believe that uh, all those meetings have not uh, yielded any desirable results. And so we are still committed to our mobilization for action uh, midnight, midnight uh, Sunday. But can Nigeria afford to shut down the economy as planned by the Labour at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic? <laughs> My sister, yeah, yeah, you know, people ask those questions. Uh, can we afford, afford to shut down now? But for a government that, that saw the sufferings of Nigerians at this particular point in time, the hunger, in the land, the, the poverty staring everybody on the face, the rising food prices, the humongous burden that the pandemic has brought upon the people, and decided to inflict more pain on the people. It is, it is sheer madness or naivety on the, on the part of Nigerians, especially the trade union movement, to keep quiet and not do something, and keep quiet and not stop this government for, uh, from, from further, uh, further uh, uh, you know, forcing increasing burden on the people of this nation. You see, it's like when you see 
a moving train. Okay, that you know that at the end of that train, at the end of that rail, there will be a, there will be a what a crash. Probably there is a pit there that is going to fall. And people are seated in the in the train and they are saying, please, uh, we are we can manage this train. Let us continue going the way we are. But you know, you have seen the pit ahead. And so you have to stop it. If you are responsible, you have to stop it. And so the trade union movement is exciting responsibility, it's exciting maturity in this case to ensure that this country does not collapse, that the economy does not collapse, that this nation does not implode. Because if we allow what is going on unchecked, Nigerians will rise on the streets and nobody will control it. And the outcome, nobody will define it. So it is better we engage now. Hmm. The federal government set up a delegation to meet with the leadership of the labor unions. So what were the points of this agreement that led to the deadlock? Uh, we, 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 we have not reached any agreement, like I said, with the government. Uh, it's only we have asked government to reverse its decisions. The price, the, the hike in the price of petroleum should be reversed. The hike in the price of electricity tariffs by nearly 100% should be reversed. We are also talking about that. Value added tax that was hiked by about 50%. That should be reversed. You could see the impact of this on the economy. You could see the impact of this on food. My, my sister, it has become so unbearable. People are complaining every minute. And a lot of people stop me on the way or some call me and say, what are you people doing? We are all suffering. Is it that you people are not feeling the pinch? All of us are feeling the pinch. Nigerians are in a grinding machine. And this government is the one grinding us. It is the time for us to be resolute, for us to stand up against this government and ensure that they do the right thing. So until they reverse what they have done and meet our demands, we, 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 will, not, we will not relent in pursuing this, uh, our goal. And the governors hope to meet with the leadership of the union later today. So are there any hope of a possible resolution? <laughs> anyway, the trade union movement, like I, like I always say, is a bargaining construct. We believe in negotiation. If governors say they want to meet, which is today, we will meet with, gov uh, with the governors and the federal government. Let us hope that the governor can, you know, uh, uh, probably push the federal government to meet our demands. But if the governor cannot push the federal government to meet our demands, uh, then we don't have any other choice. Because the demand that we have tabled on the table is for the safety of Nigerians. The, the, the demands we have put on the table is for the safety of this country. The demands we have put on the table is, are the demands of the Nigerian people out there on the street. It is not trade union demand. These are the demands of the people. These are the demands of the market women, the very poor. And so they are irreducible minimum. So the only way to avert any, any industrial action or any uh, protest is for the governors to pressure the federal government to reverse what they have done. It is not the state governors that took all this action. It is the federal government that took the action. We also know that probably the one they call the, uh, the, the fuel subsidy, um, whatever, also impacts on the monthly allocation to the state governors. Uh, but we know that the crisis now, the crisis of living in Nigeria now, will be more terrible, even in the state, than at the federal level. So the governors should, you know, make it imperative, should make the federal government understand the need to, uh, to reverse themselves. That way, we will avert the action of Monday. Mm. So if after this meeting, Labour decides to still uh, go on with the strike, what's your advice to Nigerians to mitigate the likely sufferings that this strike move might cause? Yeah, Nigerians, uh, we are already suffering. And as it is, uh, they say that the, 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 uh, the tree of liberty is always... Uh, fertilized or watered by the blood of the innocent. 
But the fact is that Nigerians are already suffering. And we are going to make huge sacrifices. That's why we ought Nigerians that this is one battle all of us must join hands together. And I am happy that it is being led by Nigerian masses, you know, by people on the street. It's being led by them. We are only providing leadership. And so we will all join hands, prepare ourselves, stock, our stock food in our houses, buy fuel for our generators, because there will be no light, because buses will not run. And we know that hospitals will not work. So people must be prepared for all these and the most important thing is to get food ready in your house and make up your mind to come out on the street and get involved in the action, you know, from Monday, if this government remains unresponsive to our demands. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Onika, for your thoughts on the breakfast this morning. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you for having me. Um.